In today's lecture, we are going to start with one of the fundamental topic in chemistry. Matter, its properties, and its changes. We are going to start with the definition and classification of matter, what it is and how we organize it. Then we'll look at the properties of matter, before moving on to the difference between substances and mixtures. Next, we'll talk about elements and molecules and how we represent them using chemical formulas. Finally, we'll wrap up with the units of measurement that scientists use to study matter. Before we dive in, let's look first at our learning objectives. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to recognize the scope of chemistry, classify matter into its different forms, Differentiate between physical and chemical properties. Understand the types of changes matter can undergo. And identify the basic units of measurement. So, what is matter? In simple terms, matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. That includes everything you see around you, whether it's a rock, a strawberry, gold, or even the air you are breathing right now. If it takes up space and has mass, it's matter. Now, let's move on to how matter is classified. Under normal conditions, matter exists in three primary states. Solids are rigid, with fixed shapes and volumes, like a rock. Liquids have a fixed volume but no fixed shape, meaning they take the shape of their container, like water in a glass. Gases have neither a fixed shape nor a fixed volume. Instead, they expand to completely fill their container, like the air inside a balloon. Next, let's talk about the properties of matter. A property is a characteristic that helps us identify or describe a material. There are two main types. Physical properties can be observed without changing the substance itself. Examples include color, melting point, boiling point, or whether it's solid or liquid. Chemical properties describe how a substance interacts and changes into something else. For instance, copper turning green when it oxidizes is a chemical property. Just like properties, the changes matter undergoes are also divided into two categories. Physical changes occur when the substance changes in appearance, but not in composition. For example, ice melting into water. It's still H2O. Chemical changes occur when the composition itself changes and a new substance is formed. For example, when natural gas burns or when iron rusts. Now let's take a closer look at physical changes. A common example is when matter changes its state. By heating, a solid turns into a liquid, which is melting, or a liquid turns into a gas, which is evaporation. By cooling, a gas turns into a liquid, which is condensation, or a liquid turns into a solid, which is freezing. These processes change the physical state, but the chemical composition remains the same. Ice, water, and steam are all H2O. Let's do this quick example. I will give you some situations and we'll decide whether each one represents a physical change or a chemical change. But before, you should pause the video, write down your answers, then resume to check them. Fashioning a piece of wood into a round table, this is a physical change because the wood remains the same. Straightening a bent piece of iron with a hammer, also a physical change, since only the shape changes. Producing hydrogen gas by adding water to potassium, this is a chemical change, because a new substance is formed. Grating a piece of cheese, physical change, the cheese itself is unchanged. Burning wood to make pizzas, chemical change, because the wood reacts with oxygen, to form new substances. 
photosynthesis in plants, chemical change, since plants produce glucose and oxygen from carbon dioxide and water. A pure substance is a single kind of matter. It has a definite and constant composition and distinct properties that help us recognize it, such as appearance, smell, or taste. Examples include pure water, gold, or oxygen gas. A mixture is different. It is made by combining two or more substances. Mixtures do not have a constant composition and can be separated by physical means. They are classified into two types, homogeneous and heterogeneous. A homogeneous mixture has the same composition throughout, like sugar dissolved in water. These can be separated by distillation, crystallization, evaporation, or chromatography. A heterogeneous mixture does not have a uniform composition, for example, sand in water. These can be separated by filtration, decantation, sieving, or centrifugation. For the second example, let's classify some mixtures. Here again, pause the video, think about each one, then resume to check your answers. Water and coconut oil, heterogeneous mixture, since oil and water do not mix uniformly. Salt water and sugar water, both homogeneous mixtures. Almond oil and olive oil, homogeneous mixture, as they mix uniformly. Fresh orange juice, heterogeneous, because of the pulp and particles. A paracetamol tablet mixture, usually heterogeneous, as it contains active pharmaceutical ingredients along with excipients. Next, let's talk about elements. An element is a pure substance that cannot be broken down into simpler substances. Elements are represented by chemical symbols, usually one or two letters from their names. The first letter is capitalized, the second is lowercase. The elements around us are not evenly distributed. In the Earth's crust, for instance, the most abundant element is oxygen making up about 45%, followed by silicon at 27%, and aluminum at around 8%. But in the human body, the picture is different. Oxygen is still the most abundant at about 65%, but then comes carbon at 18%, and hydrogen at 10%. Currently, there are about 118 known elements, of which 88 occur naturally. Examples include hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, and calcium. All elements are organized in the periodic table of elements. The table has horizontal rows called periods and vertical columns called groups or families. The periodic table is one of the most important tools in chemistry because it helps us understand relationships and predict properties. The combination of elements forms molecules. A molecule is made of at least two atoms held together by chemical forces. Examples include hydrogen gas H2, water H2O, and aspirin C9H8O4. Molecules can be homoatomic, made of atoms of the same kind, like O2 or Cl2, which represent elements, or heteroatomic, made of different atoms in a fixed ratio like H2O or CO2, which represent compounds. Molecules can also be classified by size, such as diatomic molecules like H2, CO, or Cl2, or polyatomic molecules like CH4, O3, or NH3. In the third example, we will look at diagrams of molecules and identify whether they are diatomic, polyatomic, elements, or compounds. Don't forget, pause the video, do it yourself, then resume to check. The answers are, from left to right, polyatomic compound, diatomic compound, polyatomic compound, and diatomic element. Now let's talk about chemical formulas. 
A chemical formula tells us which atoms are present in a molecule and how many of each. For example, oxygen gas is O2, meaning two atoms of oxygen. Aspirin is C9H8O4, meaning nine carbons, eight hydrogens, and four oxygens. Water is H2O, with two hydrogens and one oxygen. Carbon dioxide is CO2, with one carbon and two oxygens. We only write a subscript when the number of atoms is greater than one. To simplify the classification of matter, we can refer to this diagram. Matter can be either pure substances or mixtures. Pure substances can be elements or compounds, while mixtures can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. This framework helps us understand the materials around us. After finishing the qualitative part of matter, let's discuss the quantitative aspect. Chemistry involves measurement. The physical properties of matter are determined by measuring quantities such as mass, volume, length, time, temperature, pressure, and concentration. All measurements should include a number and a unit, and the units we use follow the International System of Units, or SI units. For example, mass is measured in kilograms, length in meters, time in seconds, and temperature in Kelvin. Other units that are not commonly expressed in SI unit can be derived from these. For example, volume in cubic meters, density in kilograms per cubic meter, and concentration in moles per cubic meter. To conclude, matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. Matter can be classified based on physical and chemical properties. Most matter exists as mixtures of pure substances, which can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. Compounds can be broken down into elements by chemical reactions, but elements cannot be separated further by chemical means. Substances have properties that are either physical or chemical. And finally, measurements in chemistry follow the international system of units.